Today we're in Luminar Neo with a portrait tutorial for you showing you just how easy you can take something pretty mediocre straight out of camera and make it amazing. We're gonna head over here to our catalog here and here's the photo that I wanna focus on right now. What I would do typically was would bring this right into our upscale tab and make this thing two times bigger because I'm going to utilize a big crop. So let's do that. It's going to do all the heavy lifting. And that's what I love about this program. It's going to be able to do a lot of the work that would have taken a lot more work in something like Photoshop using layers, um, using this awesome algorithm that AI is, is doing for us these days. So all I've done with this guy here is basically doubled the size or the resolution of the photo. And the reason I did that is because I want to utilize a big crop. So now I want to head into our edit tab and let's go over to, of course, crop. Let's crop right in. And now we're not going to have this loss of detail for the most part because we've made that file resolution just that much bigger. I always like to check out Composition AI to see what it thinks is going to look pretty good here. But in this case, I really don't like that. What I want to do is really focus on the two subjects here, as well as this belly because it is a maternity shoot. Um, something like that. So I'm going to hit enter and that's going to be our starting image. And as you can see, there's still some pretty big distracting elements here. It doesn't look super good, uh, but we're going to fix all that. Don't worry about it. So first, let's start off with our develop tab here in Essentials. This is just basic edits and just making a few adjustments to account for what the baseline of our photo is going to look like. Mess around with the highlights and the shadows, bringing out some details and of course using contrast to kind of set the uh, the tone for our image. And I want it to be a kind of a, a dreamy, a really intimate photo. So I'm going to use quite a bit of contrast, something like that. And I love that you can go in and check out the before and the after of each edit that you do with a simple click. There's the before and the after. Once again, as you can see, just a few sliders makes a pretty darn dramatic difference. So let's st start with the, the actual subjects. And I wanted to push this thing to its limit. Usually the portrait mode of here is probably for the most part designed for one person, but let's see how it does with two people. Let's go down here to our portrait tab and we wanna go for the face AI to start off with. Let's, let's go right into our faces here, which is gonna be, of course, why we take portraits to see the expressions and the detail of the faces here. And let's, let's bring this out a little bit. Let's, of course, focus on the eyes to start with. And I love this eye enhancement tool here. Eye enhancer, if you bring it up to 100, it looks a little bit creepy, a little bit too much there, obviously. And I don't really recommend you bringing anything up to 100. But around the 50 mark seems to be pretty good in most cases. So again, let's check out the before and the after. Not doing a ton with his eyes, maybe just a little bit. Well, we'll, we'll just do a little bit on that uh, a little bit later on. There's a ton of great tools when it comes to the face here and the eyes. We can whiten the eyes, we can enlarge the eyes. Now this is something that I really don't like to do a ton, maybe just a little bit to draw some more interest, but for the most part I stick to the basics like eye enhancer, removing dark circles like this one as you can see here. Uh, it does a pretty darn good job again. Here's the before and here's the after. Not too dramatic, but just enough to make a difference. We can also improve the eyebrows, give it some more contrast so that we're actually bringing more focus into the face. Again, before, and here's the after. We can go into the mouth and whatnot, look at lip saturation and change the redness and darkening, teeth whitening. Well, we're gonna stick to the basics for the sake of time here. Next, I wanna go into the skin AI and maybe smooth out some of that skin, get rid of a few of the blemishes here. There is a skin defect removal tool here. I find that it doesn't really do too much. I don't really trust it that much. Again, we'll check the before and the after. Yeah, it just reduces little things like that a little bit, something that I'd want removed. So I'm not gonna actually use that. Instead, I'm just gonna rely on it smoothing the skin for me. Let's go up to about halfway and see what that looks like. Check the before and the after. Looks pretty good to me, maybe just a little bit overdone. We've got some shine removal here. We don't have to worry about that because we don't have a ton of shine on our faces here. Uh, but that's looking pretty good for the face for me. I can zoom out a little bit and have a look at the overall image. And then of course, down here, I can check everything that we've done before and after. So looking pretty good. I'd like to maybe brighten up here this bit, but we'll do that in a little bit later. Uh, for now, I want to go and address the big elephant in the room, and that's the background. 
Again, lots of distracting elements here. It doesn't look very good. So what I'm gonna do is actually expand this beautiful flower, this bush here, into the rest of our image. And the way I'm gonna do that is with the clone tool down here. This is a fantastic tool where we're basically gonna take the source or part of our image and then we're gonna paint that part of it on a different part of our image. Now we can really fine tune it down here using the size, different sizes, softnesses, and strengths. But you have to be careful when you're doing this because you want it to look natural. So you can play around with the strength and the softness, which is pretty much the feather around it. And I'll give you a kind of an example here. You can see the feather over here. And if we bring that down, we can see that it's changing. And if we bring it up, we can see that it's gonna be definitely more soft around the edges. But I wanna keep some realism to this, so I'm gonna keep the, the softness rather low and I wanna keep the strength quite high. And the strength is basically how much of it is going to uh, basically be revealed as I paint. So to give you an example of this, I'm gonna basically click here. You can hold Alt and then click your source, let go of Alt, and then you can just paint in. And above there, you can actually see in real time where it's taking those pixels from. And I'm just painting in here the background that I want. And I'm gonna do this for the sake of time. I'm gonna speed this up for you. But all I'm gonna do is basically expand this flower area behind to the entire image. And I'm being really careful not to get too close to our subject because it will bleed over and we'll lose the details here. And it'll look kind of funny. Also a tip, if you do manage to kind of go crazy here and uh, paint in the wrong thing, you can just press Control Z and it will take you back one step or basically the last thing you did. And you can do that as many times as you need to. And there we go, there's our background, and I think that looks much better. Let's look at the before and the after with a bit of cloning. And we're gonna make it look more natural, don't worry if it looks a little bit funny to the eye right now, we will clean it up a little bit. And as you go, you can just take a step back and look and assess at what looks good and what doesn't. And down here, I'm noticing that there are some distracting elements. On the dress here, there's just a few things that kind of look a little bit funny in the material. And of course, this shirt that's sticking out here. So what I wanna do for that is actually go over to the erase tab and we're gonna just do a little bit of erasing. So grab that erase tab and all we're gonna do basically do here is just paint in what we don't want there and AI is going to basically do the rest. Now this isn't a perfect tool, I'll show you in a, in a second here, but I'm just gonna go in onto the hands and get rid of a few of the sunspots as well. Uh, and we can also even go into the face and, and maybe clean up a couple of the spots that the skin removal tool missed just a little bit. So let's do that, we'll zoom out. Um, and then we're gonna hit erase over here and the magic is gonna happen. So in just a few seconds, it's gonna basically sample from around those areas and clean it right up. I find that the bigger spots aren't perfect here. You can see that there's kind of weirdness going on in the dress, but that's okay. We can head down to our clone tool and just do a bit more of that uh, area ourselves, uh, to where it looks a little bit more natural. Once again, I can kind of fine tune the strength and the softness of it. Uh, but I want it to look nice and natural, so what I'm going to do is just paint in uh, a different area of the dress here and maybe bring up that strength a bit. And in no time, it's going to look just like it did when we started, minus that uh, kind of weird thing sticking over. And again, for the sake of time here, I am kind of speeding through, uh, but you kind of get the gist of it. And then because there's some darkness here, we're going to have to go in and make a little bit of an adjustment in terms of uh, uh, that uh, flower area. And again, it looks like it's a little bit too strong here in the strength. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to reduce the strength. And then I'm just going to pick a new source area here uh, and just paint that in nicely. Something like that. Zoom out to make sure it looks all right. And we can just make a few little adjustments there. Uh, again, right here, it looks like uh, that erase tool could be used to just make a few more little bit edits here in the fabric here. Let's see how good it does. And this is kind of tricky here because we've got so much going on in the fabric. It takes a second to render. Let's see if it can get rid of those little spots for us. 
and it does pretty good so not bad at all a little bit of kind of jagginess there not too bad um, again if I was if this was going to be a professional pick then I might uh, clean it up a little bit more but for me for this video it, I think it's completely fine so let's move on here and the next thing I want to do is just uh, look at the image overall and see what what needs to be adjusted a bit I think for me it uh, could be warmed up just a, a little bit so what I want to do is go back to our develop tab here uh, and then down to color and I want to just bump that color temperature up warm it up a little bit give it kind of a, a, a golden hour vibe something like that and now that we've changed the background I want to make sure that the uh, separation looks natural here and there's a really cool feature down here in relight AI and relights neat because we can actually uh, change the, the the brightness in the back or in the front depending on how we want it uh, and we can actually change the depth of it so here there's not a ton of depth to this image and I I want most of the attention to be drawn to the people so I don't mind if the background is a little bit dark but too dark and it starts to look a little bit funny so let's just bring it down a bit um, and overall I think the, the the brightness on our subjects is a little bit too overpowering some of the highlights here might be just a little bit too much so that looks all right for me and uh, let's head back and maybe go into the develop tab and I want to bring down the overall highlights just a bit here because these highlights on our hair here are looking just a bit harsh. Now I want to jump into something that I love in a lot of my portraits that makes a really, really big difference. Um, and that's down here at the Dodge and Burn. And this is where you can really take full control and add some pop to your portraits and your photos overall. And what we're going to do here, we can lighten and darken uh, basically with a brush so we can get in there and bring out the features that we want brought out. and darken the ones that we don't want brought out so here we're going to lighten it i'm going to keep the strength very very small i'm going to keep the softness quite small as well and the overall size is going to be small and i want to paint in uh, his eyes and i just want to make a few adjustments to this now as you can see as i paint it's it's pretty harsh it's too harsh so i want to go backwards here and i want to reduce the strength even further something like five does a pretty good job and you can just paint on uh, naturally until it feels pretty good um, yeah something like that and what we can do here is take the shadows and the highlights and just kind of paint in um, to, to add some some really nice contrast uh, where we want it we don't want to go overboard once again but we want to to bring about the features uh, that we want to be looked at we want to lead the viewer into our image so we can do it on the arm we can darken and the same thing make sure it's very low and just kind of go over and darken the the dark spots and lighten the the light spots and you'll just get a nice pop of contrast that's really going to bring this image to life down here i want to bring some attention to the belly of course so i'm just going to darken the way to it some leading lines coming up here and then right on top of it i'm going to brighten that right up and again, we're going to take away a little bit of the interest of the background. We're going to keep the color maybe desaturated a little bit, but I want the attention to be on our subjects here. Once again, I'm going to darken, trying to get rid of a little bit of these highlights here. Nothing too crazy. Maybe darken the hair a bit. And it still looks to me like I could even bring a bit more in the face out. So let's go back up to um, our face AI and just light that face up just a little bit. Both of those faces I can brighten up just like that. And I wanna take away a bit from that background. I find it a little bit overwhelming. So we're gonna head back into Relight AI over here and we're gonna just do kind of a global adjustment, brightness, near and far. So we're gonna take down the far a bit and not too much, just a little bit. And boom, just like that, that's starting to look pretty good for me. If we zoom out overall, let's have a look at the before and here's the after not too bad at all and now i want to make it look a little bit more dreamy here i want to work on the separation from the foreground and the background here and to do that i'm going to use the blur tool so i'm going to go in here i'm going to click on gaussian blur and this is a global adjustment to start with so you can actually see how much you're doing just by moving that slider i just want a tiny amount maybe four percent and you can see exactly what it's done there and then we can click on masking and now when we got our mask tool here, what we're gonna do is click on brush and basically we're gonna be able to paint on this little bit of blur anywhere we want. And I'm gonna click on erase 
because it's already applied to the entire image. And I'm just going to basically erase where I don't want there to be any blur. And what I'm going for here is just a little bit of blur just on the outside of our subject here. So a little bit in the hair, but I don't want there to be any blur in the face or in the hair details for the most part or in the front. You can actually just play with it however you want. I'm gonna do it really, really quickly here uh, just to kind of show you the difference. So there we go. As you can see here, we've got a little bit more blur in the hair. We've got some blur on the outside here, just taking away that really sharp edge. Um, and again, here's the before and here's the after. Might be a bit hard to see, but it just kind of brings it all together. And for me, just taking a step back, I think I would love to add just a little bit more warmth to this image. So going back up here, we can actually go over to edits and see every individual edit that we've done. And we can check out the before and the after or look in real time at what we're doing to our image, which is really cool. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's check out again the before and the after and what took about five minutes here, it would have taken about five minutes, would have taken me probably half an hour or so in Photoshop. So definitely a time saver and just a lot of the heavy lifting's done in this program if you are a beginner or intermediate. I think this is just a fantastic option. Let me know what you think of my photo here and the edits. If there's anything you wanna see in future videos, let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and if you did wanna pick up Luminar Neo, at a discount check out down in the description for an affiliate link guys thanks so much for watching the video and if you enjoyed it hit that like and subscribe button join the community and like always make mistakes be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures see you next time